So I've brought you back in November instead of December for two reasons. One, we now have a full pallet and a half of eggs to sell. And so I want to see what we get from that. That's a much better load than we had last year. Um, but before we do that, there's been an accident on the farm. I took this corner a little too fast for the load that we had. And I tipped our our UTV here. Um, now, if I were to go into the map, find this on the map, there is a reset button, which will send the vehicle back to the shop. I'm not going to do that because if you have something loaded in a vehicle, especially a trailer, I don't know if it would do it on this. I could maybe unstrap the eggs and get away with it not doing it. But if you have a trailer that you tip from taking a corner too fast or going over a bump or something and it's loaded and you reset it, you lose everything that's in that vehicle. So instead, we have the tractor with the forklift on it, or with the pallets, with the pallet forks on the front loader. I am going to try to tip it back up. And what is this gra- what is this? No, it doesn't tell me. I think... I'm trying to remember how many months it's been. Yeah, we're definitely past the first growing season, so I'm going to try not to drive in that if I can it'll ruin the crops because I don't have narrow tires on this right now and I don't want to go to the shop to put narrow tires on it for the one second that we're going to be potentially in the field let's see if we can scoop this up tip her back over oh yeah oh yeah there she goes beautiful and we barely had to drive on the edge I don't think we ruined any crops Oh, maybe one. That's fine. So I'm just going to put this away, and then we'll go sell those eggs. I've got the straw all ready to go. Oh, and we got a new trailer. I kept my eye on the discount page and got a good deal on a trailer that's... Oh, I don't know. What is it? Twice? A little more than twice the capacity? So... The one that we started with is... It's not going to tell me. Okay, hold on. Let's look it up in the shop. All right, so that's eight cubic meters. And the one that we have now, this one, right? We own one, yes. So this is 18.5, so well more than twice. Um, two and a half times, right? Eight, eight, 16, well, plus two and a half meters. But anyway, more than twice the capacity but I got it for almost the same price as another one of these brand new. I think it was 13,000 in the shop. Um, and I just couldn't pass that up because that's a fantastic, it was like 60 or 65% off and we needed a new one, but that also frees this up to stay a bale trailer for all of our pallets that we're using. So now we don't need to buy a bale trailer or a pallet trailer or anything like that. We have a trailer we can use dedicated to that. And we have one that we can move more grain in. So this is all ready to take to sell that hay. We ended up with two, four, six, eight, nine, nine full stacks of hay. Or of straw, not hay. That is straw. Straw and hay are very different. Hay is made when you cut grass and you turn it with a tether and you feed it to animals. Straw is made when you cut um, or when you harvest grain. It's what's left in the field. And you use that for bedding. Uh, you can use it like if you have cows and you put straw in their enclosure they'll make manure if you don't put straw in the enclosure they'll only make slurry um and also you can probably sell it at the biogas i would believe and i know the animal dealer will take it which is probably where we're going to go sell that next month but we have 2189 eggs 
So we're gonna go ahead and drive into here. It's back right into their loading dock here. Oh, don't tell me that it's not gonna dis. Is it because I have the straps on? You're just not disappearing. Am I gonna have to figure out how to get those out of here? It was hard enough getting them in. I cannot dump with this, right? Ooh, maybe I can. Ooh, I can open it up. Okay, that'll make it easier to get them out. So. Let me go get the tractor. I just scooped him in, dropped it with the forks to get him in. I didn't realize we could open our little tailgate there. Let's leave this. Boy, I've been having nothing but trouble with these triggers, huh? Only one of them have worked the way that I thought it would. I'm surprised uh, because when we took the eggs to the bakery, they disappeared off the forks. But they're not wanting to disappear off the back of this. And I wonder if it's because it doesn't recognize it as the right kind of surface. But usually, if you're in a trailer of any sort or anything like that, you don't have problems. But see, here's the thing. I've got, what, like 780 hours or something in this game. And I'm still finding things out and figuring stuff out. So if it takes a while, don't frat. Oh, let's see if we can get closer and actually line up our forks. Why are you not going in? Oh, uh, don't tilt forward. There we go. Oh, come on. Try not to knock that thing over again. Let's see if, yeah, so holding them on the forks, they're going. Usually on a trailer or anything like that, they would just sell too. That was 3,386. Let's see what we get for the full skid. The camera angles are awkward. So the only angles we have are in here where you obviously can't see anything in here. Um, the crane arms, for like lo some logging equipment and stuff are much easier to see what you're doing because they'll have uh, a tool camera where the cent center point of the camera is actually like down on the arm so you can look right at the end of it and see where it is in space and what you're doing instead of like trying to sit to the side or behind it or over it Which may not be the most realistic, but for a video game, it, it works a lot better than trying to look at it at an awkward angle like this. 6,000 for that. So that's a total of... I didn't remember, what was it, 9,000 or something? Yeah, $9,393 for this year's worth of eggs. So I'll go ahead. That was it for today, really. I think I need to top off their grain. Yeah, I need to top off their grain. We now have 28, 29, still 30 chickens. Those guys are halfway to reproduction. Oh, we have 30 chickens, but I think we only have space for 30 chickens. So, what we may do, let's take a look at this real quick. Because we may sell off our oldest chickens. They're still pretty young though. I think the price on them will probably still go up. I want to say that the price on chickens maxes out at like 36 months. But I don't remember 100%. Get this back ready. Oop. Oh, and I remembered we don't have to pay money for a bale fork for what we're doing because the pallet forks work just fine. You just stab them in and boom. That seemed to work out fine, so that saved us a, a little bit of money there. Spending money left, right, and center, getting everything set up and all that, but save money where you can, right? Oh, do 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 do. 
Let's see about selling chickens because if we have to pay, oh, there's more eggs. I just picked them up. If we have to pay the fee, so that's 13 months, 21 months, 11 months. So they're all 25. These are our oldest. So it's $20 a chicken. Yeah, I guess we'll just let them ride. We're 30 out of 30. When they max out at, I believe it's 36 months, we'll sell them, just let the chickens that are in there make new chickens. But I'm gonna go to bed, and then in the morning, we'll figure out who's got the best price for the straw, go sell that, and then we'll take our grain to the grain mill. See you in a minute. We ended up with 88,200 liters. Actually, is that just what's on the trailer or is that both? Yeah, so that's both. Okay, so we ended up with 88,200 liters total of straw off our four fields. Um, the animal dealer here is paying the best price. So we're going to bring the straw over here and see how much money we make. I think it's gonna be roughly ten thousand dollars. Nine ten thousand dollars, something like that. Well, that's fourteen hundred dollars a bell. That's not bad. Will you take it off my trailer? Yes. Look, it worked for once. And that's another eleven thousand. So yeah, that's actually Decently better than I thought. That was sold bales twelve thousand nine hundred and forty-four. So good. So I will go and get our grain, and we will get it sold at the mill. Coming into the mill with our first load. Let's check what our tip side is on this trailer. It is the back. So we have 18,500 liters in this load. The, the grain mill isn't the best price by a little bit. Uh, I think Feed and Grain South was paying a little better and Johnson's Farmer's Market might have been paying a little better as well. But there's a reason I want to sell it all here. And once we get it all sold, I'll show you why. The $19,622 for this load. I'll go get the second load, and I'll be right back. Our second load is only 4,719 liters which is going to leave us woefully short of the $96,000 that we need to buy the mill. That bring us to 61,293. That got us another $5,016. So let's park for a second. and see what we can do about this. So if we go into the menu, go to the money tab, we can borrow in increments of $5,000. So we have 61, we need 96, right? We need 96, but we're gonna have, we have, uh, it's about $150 a month worth of uh, what do they call it? Do, 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 do. Here we go. Property maintenance. 158, 159, 160. So we have property maintenance fees on our, our buildings and stuff. So we need, say, maybe 100,000 total. And then, because that'll give us a little bit of leeway, we'll still have a little cash in our pocket. 
and then we will have um have to do contracts and stuff to make up the difference until our business becomes profitable so let's go ahead and borrow forty thousand dollars now we have a hundred one thousand two hundred and ninety three dollars Hopefully that doesn't kill us on loan payments. We'll find out next month though. But now we can come up here and buy the building. So it tells us here that we own it. There's, we can make wheat flour, barley flour, oat flour, and sorghum flour. And then how much barley is in there and how much flour. This is actually working pretty quick. And now this wrench, instead of being a buy symbol, it'll bring us into this menu. And we don't need to run all of these because we don't have any wheat. So we'll deactivate that. We don't have any oats. We'll deactivate that. We don't have any sorghum in here. So we'll deactivate that. So now we just, we have barley. Barley flour is the only one running. So it'll run 120 cycles a month. Taking 150 liters of barley, turning it into 113 liters of flour. So if there's a little attrition there. We lose a little bit, but the flour is worth more. Uh, hopefully enough to make it profitable. Um, over here, it tells you what materials you have stored. We have 22,600 and something liters of barley. Over here, it tells you what's going out you'll have you can have several recipes so like the bakery has different recipes for bread and uh the other things that bakeries do and so out here it'll have what your different outgoing things are and you can change them so there's we're storing right now our flour which means that once it hits usually it's a thousand liters per pallet once it hits a thousand liters, it'll put that out into the pallet spawn area. But if we change this, we can change it to selling where it'll automatically sell it. Once it gets to a certain amount distributing where once we have the bakery, if we want, we can have the flour that we make here distribute directly to our other productions that use flour, which will be the bakery. Um, and we'll just leave it on storing for now because we don't own anything else. So we're going to have to sell this. If you do direct selling, I believe that it sells it at a discount. You don't get the full value of it that you would if you take it yourself and obviously sell it during the maximum time. I'm not sure what those numbers are, but I know it's more profitable to sell it yourself. So we'll let this run and we'll come back here. When do we want to sell flour? That's a good question. But that was the thing I wanted to show you. I don't know if you noticed because I glossed right over it. But all of the barley that we just sold to the mill is still in there. And so we get to use it to make flour. So if you wanted, you could run something like this for a while, fill it right up and then buy the production and then you have all of the inputs already full. So basically we get to double dip on that barley. We sold it to the mill, then we bought the mill, and then we're gonna sell it to the flour. We're not doing a big enough production right now to make that actually worth it because we spent more on the mill than we made with the barley, so it was like a discount. But if you were to fill all of these all the way up, you would make a substantial amount of money on all of this being sold. And then you get to turn it all into flour and sell that. So that's just something to think about. If you sell to an input or if you sell to a production chain and then you buy that production chain, the things that you sold are still in there. And that also comes in where if you, if you were to sell to this, say every year you sell wheat and barley and oat or sorghum or even just barley say we just sold barley to this year after year 
eventually the incoming materials will fill up and it'll stop accepting it so if you get in that position where you're selling to something and then all of a sudden it won't take any more of that because it'll pop up a little thing at the bottom saying this input not accepting this material or something along those lines what that typically means is you filled it up and so then if you buy it at that point all of that is still going to be in there for you so that helps you don't end up losing the stuff and starting from scratch you get to basically double dip on it but what I will do is look up when we're going to want to sell the flower. Flower, 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 flower. There you are. Flower is January. January is the best. It's December right now. It's not going to process all of that. So we'll probably go through a whole nother cycle, sell the barley again in December, and then take what we have in January at that point and try to sell it. So I'm definitely going to have to do um, contracts between now and then. It's the middle of winter, so there's probably not much for contracts. Oh, there's some cultivating contracts. Um, but the contracts definitely go along with what season it is. You're not going to be doing a, a harvest in the middle of winter because there's, we look at it, nothing to harvest right now poplar grass and oil seed so you potentially could get a grass one but i don't think there's very many grass fields on this by default sometimes there are yeah there's a couple there's a couple so you, you could potentially get those but they don't grow during the winter so i don't think they normally do harvest contracts during the winter for them I think they stopped growing in November or December and start again in like April. Uh, actually, it probably matches. Yeah, it probably matches with this. So it's probably December, January, and February that the grass doesn't grow. But the rest of the time that it's green and you can plant it, I think that's when it does change growth stage. Grass is a little bit different than anything else. I mean, a lot of these are have their own things sugar beets sugar cane cotton anything that's not grain has a little bit of a different process to it but it's generally the same process usually it's just different machines you're using um but grass is wholly different being that you plant it once and then all you have to do is fertilize it once because it keeps a half fertilization so and then you can fertilize it by rolling the grass so you don't even have to spend money on it and then you use a mower obviously and then you can either turn it into hay uh, bale it up and turn it into silage or you can use it as grass which isn't profitable to sell but you can feed grass to like your sheep so it's fine we will maybe go over grass at some point. Uh, silage. If you're looking to make money quickly, silage is the way to go. It costs a little bit to get into it with the mowers and in the baler and wrapper and everything. But silage is by and far the most profitable product that you can make. Um, whether you sell it. Oh, let's see. Who's buying? usually the biogas plant and then the animal dealer which it looks really cheap 552 what's it max out at yeah 567 dollars per thousand liters but it has a super high yield and you can harvest i think if you do it perfectly you can harvest four times in a year you can certainly harvest three times and I think if you harvest, let's see, if you were to harvest in December, that would need one, two, three, you could harvest in May, August, November. So maybe you can only get three if you roll it every time. If you don't roll it, I think you get to save a month. But when you roll it, it sets it back to growth stage one. 
but it fertilizes it so you still improve your yield you know it'd be interesting to see the specific numbers of rolling it for a year and getting three harvests versus not rolling and getting four and see what the difference in yield is um, I'm not going to do that math because that seems like a lot of tracking numbers and stuff but I usually just fertilize it by rolling it you mow it roll it that same month wait two months mow it again um, but you so you can do it three four times a month a year and so you get a massive yield off grass fields super super um, profitable doing silage because then the silage sells for 500 something where grass itself sells for 152 and even hay is pretty cheap at 186 max so yeah there's that we have work to do being field work uh doing contracts all of that Next time I bring you back, we will have a load of flour to sell to the bakery. And not get hit. Come on, go ahead. Punk or horn at you. Go. The traffic's crazy in this game. But yes, we'll have flour to sell to the bakery. And then hopefully at that point, we'll have enough to buy the bakery. And then we can start making bread. And that'll be that whole production chain. And so we're we're running out of episodes. I think we're getting near the end. So I might show you the whole grass process if we can make if I can make this because this is like the most simple um, production chain you can do. If you do like let's see so even in the bakery you can make cakes which take all the rest of these you get eggs that butter or uh maybe butter and flour milk milk you get from cows strawberries you get from greenhouses sugar you get from sugar cane maybe sugar beets um but you need all of that to make cake and cake sells for oh i don't know i've never done cake what's cake sell for Ten thousand per thousand units oh it's, so that is butter that symbol which you would need the dairy you take milk to the dairy you can make butter and cheese there um there's all these goods that you can make you can make chocolate you can cut down trees and make planks, turn those into furniture. Uh, you can make digestate by selling slurry to the biogas plant or by having the biogas plant, filling it with slurry. And then uh, it makes digestate, which you can either sell or use as fertilizer. Uh, I think in base game, you can't make lime or herbicide or fertilizer but you can manure slurry digestate stones you get out of your field oh apparently there is a cell point on here too um you can make grape juice if you have a vineyard or raisins you can make cereal if you have uh who makes cereal i think there's like a whole cereal factory let's see what do we got so carpentry yeah so the carpenter you can make you can take planks or uh, straight logs and you make furniture and that's wood chips the dairy takes sugar and milk to make butter chocolate and cheese I think you only need the sugar to make the chocolate just milk for butter and cheese grain mill we can only make flour the spinnery you can make fabric sugar mill you can take i think that's chopped beets beets or, or sugar cane and make sugar tailor shop you make take fabric and make clothes cereal factory 
You need honey and wheat. Oats, that's probably oats. Raisins and corn to make cereal. Uh, the oil mill, again, sunflowers, olives, and sorghum makes the various oils. Grapes, grape processing unit takes grapes, makes raisins and grape juice. The bakery is the same as the other one. Carpentry is the same. These are all just duplicates. It's just a different looking building. Uh, and that's the base game productions. And you got your BGA plants, which take, you have manure, beet cut, or whatever it is. Uh, that's got to be the slurry or silage and it makes digestate uh, methane gas and electricity but you can see that's 435,000 to get the smallest one and 1.18 million to get the largest one so it takes a substantial bit of money to get into some of these and some of them you need several different production setups to get into making the thing you know so like cereal you need to be making four separate things to make a box of cereal so the one they were doing is the most simple which means it's probably not the most profitable but we should be able to scale it up a little bit make good money off it enough to just show the last few things which is like the grass work which is very different and then um, mods I want to show you how and where to get mods both in game and out of game and if you're out of game how to load them in and get them into the game for you if you get them from like the websites and stuff and uh, go over some of my favorite mods and I think that's almost it I'm not sure if there's any other real aspects of the game that you haven't been introduced to other than those few things. Um, if you have any questions or any specific things that you'd like to see, we can certainly go over it. There are a few things that I'm not going into just because I particularly don't like them, like potatoes. Uh, we can go into potatoes if you really want to know about them. But the base game harvesters are tiny, 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 tiny. So the base game potato harvester is somewhere in here. Let's go. This is the best screen for that because that'll bring us to stuff to do potatoes. There's potatoes. Uh, da, 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 this guy. So this is 1.5 meter width working head. It's down here. It's this bit right here. This drops down and digs up your potatoes two rows at a time. And so if you have a field that's any bigger than the little one behind our chickens, it takes absolutely forever to harvest potatoes. The same thing with, uh, with sugar beets. You have tiny little, this one's actually three meters. Um, probably potato technology, isn't it? Yeah, here it is. So there are slightly bigger ones. That one plants, that's a planter. This is a topper where you cut off the, the, so you plant it in rows. You, once it's ready to go, you cut off the foliage on top of the ground. And then you use one of the two harvesters, which both have a 1.5 meter working width and a six mile an hour speed to dig them up. And it takes absolutely forever. Beets is a little wider for, it's three meters, so it's twice as wide, but it's still only six miles an hour. So it's still super slow. Uh, forage harvesting we could look at which forage harvesting the only thing I've ever used it for is to make chaff 
to make silage out of. Um, we were talking about silage being the most profitable. Even more profitable than grass silage is corn silage. So if you plant corn and then you cut it down with a forage harvester before it's ready to be harvested, that makes the chaff, and actually like this head here, you'll have silage additive that we go into pallets. Silage additive is right here. And it increases your yield. And so you cut that down, you put it into a silage pit, and then wait a couple of months. It, turn, it ferments, turns into silage, and then you sell that. The yield that you get on that and the price that you get is the most profitable from what I've heard on the internet. I haven't done the research myself, but from what I've heard on the internet, from, you know, looking it up from what other people have crunched the numbers is supposedly the most profitable thing you can do in the game as far as crops without getting into a 10 step um, production chain. The only other thing that's probably that profitable is if you get into logging. And logging is very expensive as far as equipment goes. Doing forestry, all of the equipment is super expensive, except chainsaws. Chainsaws are cheap, but in order to get a decent price on logs, you have to cut them eight meters I believe from testing that I've done eight meter lengths give you the best price on logs um but you can't move them by hand obviously they're too big but if you get a front loader tool oh they have log forks where you could probably move that around with a larger tractor but if you were to get a wheel loader, something like that, that could move something substantially bigger. And then they have these kind of log forks, the grapples, which work much better. Um, you can only move one log at a time with those, but they handle really well. You can grab right onto the log, put it where you want it. So you can make a decent amount of money pretty quick logging to be able to get better forestry machines and actually get out there. If you guys want to see forestry, um, I will probably go over that on my next series. I think the next series that I'm going to do is going to be on a forestry map and we can get right into it and I'll explain what I'm doing. But that is a whole other... It's like a whole separate game in this game. So I'm not covering that here in the basics. But the next series that I do will be a forestry map because there's one that I've been, I've had my eye on for like a month now that I really want to try out. And we'll get into the big, the harvesters and all of that with forestry. And I'll go over uh, probably in the first episode exactly how those function. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, if there's anything else that you want to see, just let me know. Throw it in the comments, um, and I'd be happy to include it. Either, you know, a little a comment back with a heads up on how something specific works, or uh, making another video in this series on how to do different things. But that's most of the basics. Uh, so I think we're going to call that a day. I'll park the tractor. Our chickens are well cared for. Our fields are growing. And uh, I think we've been doing a good job. I appreciate you coming with me on this journey to check out all the different aspects. We've got at least one, if not two more. Yeah, it should be two more episodes. Because I want to finish this up with getting the flour and making the bread and comparing you know how much money we end up making off of that and then uh i want to go over mods so i'll see you again very soon probably tomorrow have a wonderful night 
uh, happy farming and good luck.